question 1.3 so it says write the number as the product of a real number and i so i is an imaginary number so whenever you see the negative square root of a number you're going to automatically change that to an i so an example that we have here is negative or the root of negative 16. So you take the root of negative 16. You cannot take the root of a negative number, so you separate the roots. So as you can see, we have square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. And then from there, you're going to put square root of 16 before the i. And then the square root of 16 is going to equal 4. And then i, you treat that like a variable and you just uh, write it right next to the four. So the answer for like something like number one is going to be four i. For number two, you're looking at a negative one being multiplied by the square root of a negative nine. So when I rewrite this, I say negative one times the square root of nine times i so i get the square root of negative 3i and then for number 23 this one's pretty unique because you cannot take the square root of 29 so i would write i square root of 29 and in this case we're not looking for decimals so let's go ahead and skip to number five. And so for number five, I have the square root of negative 125. So when I rewrite this, I'm gonna have equals i times the square root of 125. So when you're trying to figure out what are the factors, what are the square root factors of square root of 20, 125? We're gonna factor it down going like this. So the largest perfect square I can take out of 125 is 25, and that's gonna be 25 times five. And we leave them underneath the root. And then I continue to work. So that means I have i times the square root of 25 times the square root of 5 and then i'm going to simplify that the square root of 25 is 5 so i have 5 i square root of 5 and that's our solution uh how to write the number in standard form of a plus b i so this is actually a complex number and you can also have a minus excuse me, a minus bi. So a is a real number, like decimals, fractions, whole numbers, negative numbers. And then the bi is the imaginary number, which is like if you take the root of a negative number. So for number six, this is a fraction. So what I want to know, Tate, is that that denominator is shared by each part of the numerator. So then I have two divided by two, and then from here, I'm also gonna share the denominator with the square root of negative 28 divided by two. So when I rewrite this, I have two divided by two minus the square root of negative 28 divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And you're solving these individually, like each term is its own little problem. So because I have that negative underneath the square root, I'm going to take out an i. And I'm left with the square root of 28, all of that over 2. So off to the side, I'm going to try to factor out a, the largest perfect square I can out of 28. So in this case, it's going to be 4 times 7. So that's radical 4 
times radical 7. And then when I simplify that, I get 2 radical 7. So it's the same thing if I say root of 7, square root of 7, or radical 7. It's all the same number. So when I come over here to simplify, I say 1 minus 2i square root of 7, all of this over 2. Now in this case, you can simplify the 2 over 2. You cannot simplify the radical 7 over 2 because the radical 7 is like it's protected by the square root sign. So you can't divide anything else into it once you've already factored it. So then I get 1 minus i square root of 7. You have to write the, num the real number first, whatever sign there is, and then the imaginary number. And it has to be written in this form in your homework. So we are going to talk about splitting up this fraction with the different denominator. So we have negative 2 over 16 plus the square root of negative 12 over 16. So we're going to look at each term on its own to simplify. So I have negative 1 over 8 plus i square root of 12 over 16. Now I do want to try something new. You can use a calculator to find the square root of 12 over 16 and simplify it. So when we do that, you know, you have to know the, the, um, the steps of the calculator. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and do this a long way. So if I take the square root of 12, and I factor out the largest perfect square, so that's going to be 4 and then times 3, keeping the root under over both. The square root of 4 is 2, and then the square root of 3 is just 3 because we don't want decimals. So I bring it back to my fraction, negative 1 over 8 plus i, 2, square root of 3 over 16. So then we're simplifying the 2 over 16 because the radical 3 has to stay the same. So negative 1 over 8 plus i square root of 3 over 8. So there's one of two ways that we can write this. We can write the fraction that we have, or we can put it back to, because they have the same denominator, we can put the numerators back together. So negative 1 plus i square root of 3 over 8.